Hello, my fellow car modelers, and how are you doing today? I am sure that you all have noticed that uh, over the past few weeks, there was a particular series that I had been working on over the past couple of years, an adventure in building a model car, where we were building the Monogram 66 Malibu Flip Nose. If you are watching this, obviously I have returned the series and each episode is now going to have this little foreword in it explaining why it was gone and why I'm doing the series and I'm going to bring it back. The reason why is that I don't think many of you understood why I was doing that series and what the purpose of this channel is. When I started this channel, I did not want to be like all the others, not saying that they're bad. I wanted to do something different. I was not going to be a build channel. I will do builds, but I'm not going to be a build channel. I wanted to be a model car hobby information channel and tip channel. So the whole idea, as was stated in the very first episode of an adventure of building a model car, was the reason behind the series was to just have a kit that I would work on through time to use as doing tips. So if you look at the episodes, they're not so much about building that particular model. It's about showing you tips in building a model car, my way of building a model car. It will not be something that I work on all the time. I will do other episodes on other subjects and I will build other models. I am not continually working on this 66 Malibu. This brought some criticism and misunderstandings where I would literally have people so enraged that I wasn't constantly working on it and wanting the rest of this series to continue on that they would threaten to write the channel off and unsubscribe. Well, I'm going to tell you this, that's not a threat that's going to shake me up. If you want to unsubscribe, by all means do. I'm going to continue on. That is why I pulled the series. I'm bringing it back for all of you. It is going to continue on and I will work on episodes as I see fit. Could take a couple of years before it's all done. And when it's all done, you're going to have a nice whole play set to watch from beginning to end. But if you're following it and anticipating the next episode and you're trying to build the same car along with me, I, I'm sorry. That's not what its intentions were. I'm not going to do it all the time. I want to do it in my time as I see fit. I have other things I want to do. Please respect that. It's not about the build of this particular car. It is about the tips and information that I'm giving you. That was my intention. Now you know. Let's continue on and let's enjoy an adventure in building and model car. Hope you enjoy it. Well, hello, my fellow car modelers. How are you doing today? Well, here we are with the last installment of the engine on the Monogram Malibu Flip Nose and the next part of an adventure in building a model car. Car! Car! We're building that model car. Finally, really getting going on this. And we're finally done with the engine. And I'm really looking forward to showing you the last bits that we got to go. So uh, let's just get into it. Let's let's hurry up. Let's go. I, I want to get this done. I want to move on to the next step. Finally, done with the engine. Four parts. Engine done. Yes! Now we're going to move on to getting those carburetors on and the linkage and fuel line. I first wanted to kind of mock these carburetors up per instructions and I found something. If you notice right here, you see that little notch there. There is a respective tab right there underneath the carburetor for it to only go on one way. Well, the thing that I discovered, and here's some reference pictures, is monogram actually did it so they're on backwards so here's your little vacuum pot and uh, where the linkage would go b would be on the back and usually it's the other way around when you have this type of setup on a high-rise dual carburetor engine that's one problem so we needed to turn these around well another problem I'm having I have to make a decision on is there's two ways of having carburetors on high-rise dual carburetors you could have them this way or flip it 
and of course because of that tab it won't work you can have them run that way straight line this is really important to come up with because that will dictate what your linkage is going to be like if we do it the way the model has them where they're straight across or sideways or however you would want to say it that way you're going to have a lot more complex type of linkage which is fun to do and I've done them that way before but you're going to have a complex linkage that you have rods going this way and, and bell cranks and and rods going up this way pulling the linkage I don't want to get that complicated I want to do this very simply but I want to have a nice representation of linkage so I want to get the carburetors to sit like this back one but the issue I'm going to have right now in doing that is one I have to change that little tab underneath the carburetor but let's just mock it up real quick they're so long it's it's not going to fit so I've got to do some modifications I can't get them to fit so I'm going to do a little bit of modifying hopefully I can get them on that way because that's how I want the carburetors to run on this engine only for the sake of simplifying the linkage but isn't that the fun of model building we can just mess around like that and do what we want so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to do what I want so we got that little tab off and that will help us get this carburetor set better on the intake so and it's probably going to take a little bit of adjusting but I need to get the two carburetors to space out better I'm going to place this here it's not quite fitting See, the, two, the front bowl on this one and the back bowl on that one just won't allow them to cross over. We're going to have to do some modifying on these carburetors. I don't believe they're actually correct in scale and, and dimensions and everything. But we want it to look as realistic as possible. What I think I'm going to do is just sand the whole bottom of the carburetors flat. So then we don't have that peg and hole thing so there's more adjustability and maybe what I'll do is I'll take a little bit off of this back bowl and a little bit off of that front bowl and they'll be touching and I think it will look just fine so I'm gonna go ahead and do all that right now so I'm gonna take grandpa's file here and uh, just lay it down just lay the carburetor down flat and just kinda file the bottom flat on both of them and there you go we got the bottom flattened out okay with the bottom sanded I kind of got it all mocked up and they just won't fit on there perfect onto the, the placement of where the carburetor should go this one's a little too forward that one's a little too backwards then I'm going to sand a little bit on the front of this float bowl and I'm going to sand a little bit on the back of this float bowl so we've got that all done and it's still a slight bit off I might sand a tiny bit more but I don't think it really ruins the look of the carburetors just got to get uh, a little bit more closer let me show you on the side here if you can see it so as you can see on the side here um, not quite getting the uh, bolt ears of the carburetors lined up with the area that would to hold downs for the intake that uh, I think we can get that to work out close enough maybe I'm move, moving it around I don't know I don't want to sand too much more off of that off of these bowls because then it'll start to look a little little off and uh, I think it looks fine that way so we'll get it kind of adjusted on there the best we can and uh, carry on and we'll move on to getting all the linkage in so what we're going to do next here is we're going to use the holes that I drilled right there and there right about there yeah and uh, what we want to do is set up our linkage putting the carburetors in line like this instead of where the kit wanted us to do it just makes doing the linkage a little more simplified so I'm going to be using a great product put out by Detail Master in their photo etch line of this little kit that has everything you need to detail out carburetors, any kind of setup you want. This is just an excellent kit. 
and this is what's really cool about it. It has all these different types of different carburetor linkage arms, you know, that's like hollies and stuff. So I'm looking around and I see this particular linkage right here is the one I want to go with. But of course there's only one on this. Luckily I have two of these. There's another one right here. I will be trimming these off and this is this is the linkage piece I want to use. And what I do is I try to use the freshest uh, Exacto blade I, I can use and I just trim off. I know there's a lot of different tools for trimming off photo etched but this just seems to work good for me so I try to hold down the part so it doesn't go flinging across anywhere and I just get on there and boom, and there it is it's off so I'll take the other one off and then we're gonna get it up onto the carburetor so I've got this guitar string here is what I use because it's pretty strong stuff uh, it's bendable but it's tough to bend but I usually like using it because it, it stays really really straight so what I want to do is I'm just going to start with taking the end here and just doing a little bend if I can get it in there there we go with my I'm just gonna do a little bend here and you see what we got and we want to connect the two holes I made that are gonna be for the linkage there and there I need to kinda of figure out where I need to put the next bend there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and bend it. You can see there I've got the bends all in so that they'll just fit. This is basically the connecting rod between the two linkages. And I'm going to get the photo etch. I'm going to cut this right here and I'm going to put the photo etch onto this rod and then just stick it into the holes that I drilled into the carburetors. That will give us the look of the linkage and everything. I've got the linkage fitted onto the rod. This is the one that will go to the rear carburetor. Now I want to try to get the other piece onto this. But we got the glue on there and I'm trying to get this linkage positioned the same as the other one and that's that's a challenge. So <laughs> I'm just going to you just got to work it. You just it, as you can see I got it kind of sitting right here. I got it sitting just in the proper hole of the photo etched part of the linkage I got it dangling right here I'm gonna put some glue here I gotta go off camera and do it I'm really sorry I'm trying my best Let's see if I can do it with you guys seeing it I'm gonna have to put another little dab of super glue let's see if we can get this I'll use my pointer here let's see if we can get this to Kind of go to where it belongs and positioned correctly. Such a challenge. As you can see, I'm having a real difficult time getting it to point, but there we go. I think we got it. I think we got it. It looks pretty much the same. We'll let the super glue set up, which it pretty much is. I might put a little bit more dabs on there so that's nice and strong, and then we're going to set it onto the carburetors and see how it looks. I think we got lucky. I think it's there. You see where we're going with this? You see, we've got that one in there. Uh, and let's hope we get it into the other hole. All right, so I got it in. And we've got our linkage rod. And we've got our carburetor linkage all set. And it looks pretty good. I got everything even and and uh, you want to make sure that these are all facing in the correct direction and the right angles and everything it took some work a lot of patience but you just take your time and work real easy and make sure you stay over something because when these things drop you can never find them <laughs> that's always a challenge and when these are the only two I had I did not want to lose them the next thing we want to do is a return spring and I'm probably going to run the return spring from here to maybe a bracket I'll make here the return spring you guys are going to find this really neat and what I use for return spring we've got guitar string the smallest gauge string on a six string guitar that is still round wound there's a string and then they wrap it round wire a, a smaller gauge wire around the main string now what you're going to want to do is yank the round wire 
the rounded wire, round wound wire, off of the main string, and that's going to give you a small spring, and it's perfect for return springs. So let's show you how I do it. So to start off, I want to figure out how long I want my spring to be, and I want it to be about that long. It's okay to have it a little longer than what where we want to place it. So you want to have as much as possible. So I'm going to cut this. There we go. We've got that piece of wire right there, or guitar string. This is where it gets a little complicated, but hopefully you can see this. It's just I usually just take my fingernails, or if you got any tools, but you want to kind of start by pulling a little bit of the round wire off. Okay, you see there? I've gotten some of that wire off of there. pull some of that off and what we want to do is get that kind of like that you see that we've got some of that round wire the the wrapped wire off the main string and I'm going to pull that out see how we got that there now the reason why we do that what we need to do because this is so tight and you can't pull that string out of there we want to get rid of that string and have just basically a round rounded a round wire spring this is basically a little spring right there so I'll usually take the two ends here in my fingers and I'll start to twist them in the opposite direction of how they're wound because what that does is it loosens up the spring around the main guitar string and hopefully what you end up getting is you can grab a hold of that string, the core string, and pull it out. And it is really tough. Okay, so I've got the spring coming off of that core wire. And you see there, I started, I got it loose and I started slipping it off. And there, we'll take it off the rest of the way. And look what we got. We've got ourselves a spring. Now what we want to do is you want to take these ends here, kind of get them straight out. You just get a hold of them and you just slightly pull on it, just a little bit. And look at that. We're making a spring. You can see you get it kind of not so close together and you can really see that it's a spring. And that, we will now trim these to length and place those onto our carburetors and down to, say, like where the bolt would be. There'd be a little bracket on the bolt of the intake. Or wherever you like. It's completely optional to you, but there we do. We've got ourselves a return spring. Carburetor return spring. I'm even going to stretch it out a little bit more. Don't want to go too far, but you got it looking like a spring. Let's put it onto the engine. I went ahead and I attached the spring down here at the intake. I found a little spot that it would stick in there and I hold with super glue. This is kind of going to be hidden a bit by the engine plate. Maybe later. We'll see how it looks. Maybe we'll have to do some doctoring to make it look like there's a little bracket there. But that was the best place to put it. And the next spot I want to do is I'm going to put a little super glue on it and we will attach it to the carburetor linkage. Okay, I got it attached up at the linkage here and we've got ourselves a good looking return spring. There you go. That gives you a good little added realism to your model. Simple as that. Just takes a lot of patience and just keep working at it but it's neat how the things you wouldn't even think about, like uh, who would think of getting a carburetor return spring off of a string from a guitar. That is what I use for making carburetor return springs. And there is my carburetor linkage. So we're going to put the velocity stacks on now. And uh, it's basic model building. I'm sure you guys know how to do it. I just put a little super glue there and there. And I'm just going to place them right where they need to be. 
and there is our velocity stack look. And as you can see, the screen there in the center there of the velocity stack, I just took some Tamiya black panel line detailer, and I went ahead and just touched it a little and just kind of brought that uh, the, the, the look of the screen in there. So that's it. There's our look. I think it turned out really nice. Okay, on to the next phase here. What we're going to do next is we're going to run some fuel lines out from this area and from this area right here. Hole that I drilled into the float pole. Being that this is a car from the 70s and kind of a low bucker, I'm not going to go with anything like braided line or AN fittings or anything. I'm just going to run a black line out that's representing the black rubber fuel line that would be used. So we're going to go with some electronic wire that I'm not sure what gauge this is, but I know this particular product was from a detail company from years ago. I, I showed them before MSE, so I'm not sure who would have this now, but this was their 1 16th scale spark plug wire. And uh, I basically have used it for many things, any type of like big cables, battery cables, or doing fuel line. It's got a solid core wire, so you can bend it and shape it, and it'll stay in shape really good. So that's what we're gonna use on this. What I'm basically going to do is I'm going to just run a couple lines there and there. I think I'll just run one over this way and run this one here, around here. Or eh, maybe we'll do something fun and tricky and go like right in between here. I'm kind of going for that backyard shade tree mechanic or hokey hot rodder, whatever look. So, so I hope I didn't offend anybody. We'll bring the fuel line over here and have them both meet. Uh, you can't see, but somewhere like right on this side of the engine over here. We'll probably, when it's in the car, we'll go ahead and have some kind of distribution block over, maybe up at the firewall. We'll see how that works out when we get the engine into the car. But for now, we're going to do the fuel lines just coming off of the carburetor. I've got this needle nose plier right here that is rounded, as you can see. And I'm going to use this to kind of shape the wire into a good, steady, smooth curl around. I just go and go ahead and hold it in there, and we can kind of twist around, and that gives us a nice hook. What we want to do is, I think what we'll do is we'll glue this into place right there. I'm going to try to bend this around a little more. So we've got this much figured out, and there we go. So it's right about there. I'll probably have this curl around that way. We want to just start shaping this wire to kind of meet where we want it to go. We want it to go right about over here. Let's turn this around so you can see it. Probably right about here because this is where the, the bars that are kind of the front chassis framework. Right about there is probably where we'll come up with some sort of a distribution block. And I think I'm going to have the other one come out and just come out from in between here We'll do that next, but right now we kind of got this where we want it, but we want to make this a little more flowing because these things don't have, you know, they don't just do little bends like this. Uh, rubber holes will just kind of be like a continuous loop, so I'm going to kind of reshape this. That should do it. That will give it more of that look, and, and, and the thing is it's, it's very movable. We just get it in there for now. And we can kind of adjust it once the engine's in the car. All right, put a little super glue on the end of that. I'm going to go ahead and fit that right into there. And before the super glue sets up, we'll kind of set that like that. I'm going to get that a little more farther down like that. And that's where we want it to set. So we're going to run the second line right through the center of the intake here. And just because I think that would be kind of a hokey way of doing it, and it'll look pretty cool, I think. But I'm also doing this to kind of get the idea of the length that I'm going to need. I figure I'll just cut this off right there and strip that end, and we'll get this all curled around so it looks like the rubber line. See if we can get it into the proper spot. This ended up being a little more tougher than I thought it would be. I'm sorry if I keep knocking the camera. And of course, this just doesn't want to handle so I'm almost in it there's where we want to go got it in there so 
now that we got it test fitted, I'm going to put a little glue on this and hopefully we can get it right back there before this glue sets up. Let's see what we can do. It's tough with this engine stand being all wobbly on me. We're getting there. Getting there. There we go. We're in. Excellent. That's good. That's what we wanted. I think that'll be a good look. There you go. And then when we get this engine into the car, we'll figure out where these are going to end up. So what we want to do is we want to get the look of a clamp onto the hose right here, holding it onto like there's a barb fitting sticking out of the carburetors. We're just going to do that with a little bit of paint. So we're going to go ahead and use steel testers metalizer. This is going to be a real steady thing here. I'm just going to take this and just lightly hit it. Just try to make a line right there. And that will just give us a look of a clamp on there. So there you go. Pretty simple. Simple little paint detail. It'll just give the right look that we need. And again, we're not going real complex. There's a lot of other ways you could go. You could use some wire, kind of do the twist tie thing with some steel wire. That might give you a good look. Or there's photo etch of clamps. I usually don't like those because those, for fuel line because those those photo etch clamps that some companies come out with just seem to be a little bit too big. But that's an option too. We're doing this model as something simple. Fairly out of the box with some light detail. I don't want to get real heavy. This is real simplistic detail that pretty much anyone can do. And this is where I'm going to call this engine done. We are finished. But wait, I got one more idea. Let's do one more thing. I got a great surprise for you guys. Okay, this idea just popped in my head. I'm so glad I thought of this. I have seen this discussed several times. On the Facebook groups, people are wondering, what do you do or do you know how or how could I replicate a dipstick, an oil dipstick on a model car? Well, kitties, you came to the right place because I'm going to do it for you right now. So what we need to do first is we need to drill a hole into the engine block where the dipstick will come out, which on a Chevy big block, it usually come up right in between the two center ports and be right about there. It'll come up this way and we'll bring it up to about here. So I'm going to drill a hole right there. So if you can see, we got our hole drilled. I didn't think there was a need for you to see how to drill a hole. I'm sure you all know. So we got that hole drill. Let's get this out of the way. And right here, there's our dipstick. This is just a, a piece of black spark plug wire. So we're going to take this black spark plug wire here. Um, it's kind of got a messed up area here, so I'm going to cut that away. It's going to go in the block there, and it's got to stick up so high. So we figure out how high we want it to go. And where we want the tube to end is right about there. So get the engine out of the way. Let's go ahead, and we don't want to cut it. We just want to strip the insulation off right there. So I did my little roundy round way of doing that and there we go. We just take that insulation off. There we got the stripped wire. And we got quite a lot there. I actually could probably use some trimming. Probably right about there. So you want about that much. And just go ahead and take some tweezers, hold on to it right there and go just flip it around like that. See what I did? Watch the magic. Dipstick. There's a little hold there. You kind of want. You can kind of work it. There you go. You got yourself your little dipstick right there. Check your oil in your little model car. And we always got to check the oil in the car. So there's the dipstick. Let's put it onto the engine and see what it looks like. Put it right into the block right there. Think. We are glued. Let that set up. I know it looks like it's just sticking right out of the block right there, but 
this can be maneuvered wherever you want it and just kind of take your dipstick and bend it up into place and there you go you can kind of work it the thing is is once you get it up into place when we go to put the headers on you can get it totally set where you want it but it's wire so you can put it wherever you want You'll probably see right there look at that we got ourselves a dipstick really simple to do and I, I, I've done this on quite a few models it just kinda gives you just that little bit more added realism and depiction of what a real car is like there's our dipstick we got our engine all detailed out with a dipstick how about that thank you thank you thank you thank you so what do you think of that man even a dipstick now did you think that was going to come i didn't even think that was going to come that just poof just all of a sudden wham now i get excited about model cars what can i say so anyways so that was really really exciting I, I i really liked how that engine turned out it's it's simple detailing really goes a long way keeping the build of this model really really simple i tell you that that's the toughest part for me like i said in the past videos is engine detail i really kind of get oh uh, i i don't know it it weighs me down and lately i have been building models that don't even have any engines in them sometimes or something i'm kind of pleased with that but it was really fun i, I it was very gratifying kind of getting a, a an engine detailed again and i really am pleased with how it looks i hope you guys like it i hope you guys picked up a lot of neat tips and stuff like that any of you who have been struggling with engines you know the right detail supplies to get you know the the right way of going about it and i've read in the comments there's some of you that have some great ideas you know uh, of where to get your detail supplies or what you use for spark plug wire and by all means keep putting it down in the comments below i don't mind other people having different ideas and sharing it with you guys you go down there and read in the comments you might get some other ideas that could help you out that would be best for you it's what it's about it's about what's best for you there's no wrong way of doing anything i'm just doing my way i do things and Hopefully it'll help you develop your way. That was a lot of fun. I'm really excited. Can you tell I'm excited? I'm just over that help. I'm really, 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 excited. really excited. I'm, I'm really excited. What's the word I'm looking for? Excited. I, I can't, I can't tell you how excited I am. There, I said it again. I, I am. I haven't been this amped about a model car in a long time. So next is getting into doing the rest of the chassis and the suspension and the interior. That's all kind of going to be really easy and flowing and, and you know got some great neat stuff to show you some neat new tips on that area and we're going to do some cool painting techniques and then we're going to get into that body and oh do i got plans for that body like i said we're doing a beater and i have just got some great ideas i can't wait to get to that portion and that's going to be fun and we're going to have a really cool looking model i'm rambling on so it's time to finish this video we got more coming and don't forget i got my t-shirts and my mug and some stickers and i got a hoodie now and all this neat stuff my online store teespring the link is in the description below i've got more links to my daughter's two youtube channels az valor the guy who did my music at the beginning of this video model car hobby headquarters facebook group and the mediocre modelers facebook group go right down there click on it go check those places out thanks a lot for watching so so keep gluing those those fingers together keep cutting that styrene and we'll see you you in the next video i got a hoodie now and all this neat stuff at my at my My online store, Teespring. Wow, I have such a hard time with this. I just, my brain locks up. Ugh. Now you guys know why I do all this jump cuts. Um, my, my, I gotta stay like this until I can remember the word I was gonna say. Now you'll go back, watch a video, and see really what took place in between the two jump cuts. So you'll, you'll see the jump cut. I don't even remember what I'm doing here. What was I talking about? My tea? I've got, what? Hmm. The link is in the... And the Mediocre Modelers Facebook group. So go over there if you haven't joined the...
Model Car Hobby Headquarters Facebook group. I said it. Um, that's a wrap. Modeling. I'm not a mod. I've never been a model. I know I'm beautiful, but I've never been a model. I should. You think?